one of my most anticipated movies for the rest of the year, or even just this summer, is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. The long-awaited, some would say not asked for, fifth installment of the Indiana Jones franchise. I recently just learned that Zach has not seen any of the Indiana Jones movies. But where, where was your excitement at for Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny for this summer? Did you have any at all? Uh, in the beginning of the year, zero. Because obviously I've never seen any of them. Um, but when I watched the trailer, I was like, this actually looks really good. Um, and maybe want to go back and watch the rest of the catch up so I can like right now I'm watching the mission impossible movies and I'm up to five and I'm really excited to see seven now. So, um, uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to watch the Indiana Jones movies. I feel like if I'm going to be like a movie fan, I have to see these and dollar destiny's trailer got me excited. James Mangold directing got me excited. He's such a solid director and has done great movies and uh phoebe waller bridges being in it i was like okay i like her too so i thought like hey this is good, probably gonna be at least a good time it don't have to be a great movie but a good time well hold on to that excitement man because <laughs> the first reviews for indiana jones dial of destiny has come out there's not too many at the moment on rotten tomatoes it's at 50 percent for a critic rating there's 19 fresh reviews and 19 rotten reviews uh oh, wow. coming out of uh the Cannes film festival and uh so i combed through i combed through those reviews the fresh and the rotten and i pulled a couple mm -hmm. so uh, let's let's take a look at the rotten first let's see let's see what people aren't necessarily thrilled about with Indiana Jones and Dial of Destiny at the moment. So we got some yeah. critics up here. We've got uh, Stephen Garrett saying, fun isn't the most accurate way to describe its excessive antics. There's never a dull moment, but all the globe trotting hullabaloo. I love that you used that word, Stephen. That made me happy. Uh, does verge on exhausting. Uh, David uh, Fear went on to say there are needs being met here but they aren't storytelling based so much as stoking the fan base and meeting the bottom liner ones uh stephanie zakirak says there are so many chase sequences that the movie seems held together with a slend with slender bits of plot rather than the other way around worst yet they're so heavily cgi that they come off as a grimly du dutiful rather than thrilling or delightful stephanie you had me at there's so many chase sequences that's all I need to hear. <laughs> the, the trailer teased it. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got Nicholas Barber saying the jokes, the zest and the exuberance just aren't there. So instead of a joyous send off for our beloved hero, we get a depressing reminder of how much livelier his past adventures were. Uh, David Rooney says this is a big bombastic movie that goes through the motions but never finds much joy in the process. Despite John Williams' hardworking score continuously pushing our nostalgia buttons and trying to convince us we're on a wild ride. And uh, lastly, Owen Gilberman says Indiana Jones and Dial of Destiny is dutifully eager but ultimately rather joyless piece of nostalgic hokum. Hokum. There's a lot of interesting words being used by these critics. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Bring back some of the classics. So those are some of the rotten reviews. Um, so you may be asking yourselves, come on, let's get to the, let's get to the positives. Let's get away from these negative Nellies. Well, I combed through the positive reviews. And these are the best ones I could find. <laughs> and they're not much better. <laughs> oh, no. Um, so we got, I'm going to, I'm just going to say a Nick because I don't know what, I'm going to butcher that last uh one oh. uh a macguffin is meant to be just that an object that characters chase after in a story what it is and what it does doesn't usually matter surprisingly it does and gives the movie it's absolutely bonkers jaw-dropping climax that's pretty good that's not uh yeah. james Mottram, director james mangold stepping in for steven spielberg brings the character's adventures to a satisfying close while ford revels in reprising the role for one last hurrah all right that's pretty positive mm -hmm. uh Raphael. What's vexing, what's vexing is the nagging feeling that there's a much better Indiana Jones film buried in there somewhere, but it would require a feat of archaeology or at least a rewrite and some Judaish editing to excavate it. Okay. Okay, that's Okay, fun. I know you went to Juilliard, but you don't got to do all that to us. Yeah, what the heck, dude? <laughs> Use normal words. <laughs> um, Rory says, it often fizzes as much as it lulls, but in Mickelson's Dr. Schmidt, the film can at least boast a worthy antagonist and one with enough personality to cover some of those cracks. 
And lastly, these are positive reviews, by the way. Uh, Harrison Ford is the hero of the hour. He never loses either his scowl or his dodginess. He plays even the flimsiest scenes with conviction and dry humor. His performance carries the movie. Mm. All right. So those are some of the first reactions coming out of uh, the Cannes Film Festival for Indiana Jones' Dial of Destiny. Now, the Cannes Film Festival is kind of a prestigious film festival. Uh, if if yeah. you look around and ask some people who know more about that than I do, um, that's what they'll say. So there are some people online saying, like, don't fret too much just yet. This isn't really the audience for this kind of movie. But no. with these reviews now coming out, Zach, uh, what you're hearing from some of these critics, how has that heightened your excitement or dipped your excitement for Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny? Where are you feeling at with this movie at this point? So with just the headlines I was hearing, I, I was scared for the movie because I was like, oh, no, that's no, it's bad. It's both most people don't like it. But now looking into it, and this is why I always tell people when you look into Rotten Tomatoes, make sure you actually click and read the reviews mm -hmm. because I'm listening to the reviews. I don't even like half those reviews because they're reviewing the movie from like a hoity toity sensibility. And it's like, this is a blockbuster you're saying all these big words and all these things and you're not really reviewing the story the plot or anything like that you just like the nostalgia it's a seventh movie in a franchise of course there's nostalgia so like there was one or two th reviews there where i was like okay maybe i can take that and use my expectations like him saying like you know uh in the movies humor is not that great but this part of the movie with Indiana Jones is good and Mad Mickelson is a great villain and he carries the movie. Stuff like that makes sense to me. But some of the reviews there just feel like it doesn't make me understand why they don't like it other than like, I don't like CGI. I don't like chase scenes. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> so I do think that people need to temper their expectations with these reviews and wait for more like reviews like IGN and just other reviews who more are, are the audience for this kind of film. Yeah, I would agree with that. When I when I first heard the reactions were coming out, and I believe the when they first came out of Kane's uh, film festival, the Rotten Tomato score I think debuted at forty three percent, so it was even yeah. lower than fifty. Um, and I was worried. I was like, "Oh, yikes! That's not what you want to see." And I will admit, my excitement for the movie it took a dip. Once I dove into the reviews, once I read a couple of them, um, yeah, it seems like I I, I want to wait until the press screenings a little bit more because not mm -hmm. like they're not really talking about the things in an Indiana Jones movie that I want to hear about. Like, how was the action? How was the adventure? Like, they 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 do focus a lot on like, hey, this is pretty nostalgic filled, and it's like. People like nostalgia, <laughs> especially in these blockbusters, right? Like, yes, yeah. you may see that as a negative, but when they play the Indiana Jones theme, I'm going to get tingles all up and down my body. I'm going to be really excited in the theater. Yeah. So while my excitement did dip a little bit, I'm also not as worried going in as I was before I looked at these reviews, because now that I've taken a look at them, it's like, okay, I can breathe a little bit. This isn't my crowd necessarily. Let's wait and see what my crowd says once they come out of it before I go into full on panic mode. But I'm still super excited to see this. I'm definitely going to be there still on day one. But question goes to you guys. What do you guys think of Indiana Jones and Dial of Destiny premiering at Kane's Film Festival and debuting with a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes? What do you think of some of these reviews? Do you agree with uh, what we're saying? They seem a little hody toady a little high and prestigious for themselves. Or do you trust these guys and you're thinking, eh, yeah, I might hesitate my excitement on this one. Comment down below. Let me know all your thoughts and opinions, guys. And without further ado, let's take a look at what you guys are saying about this.